Fei Lao was one of the division's most trusted agents. However, her mission to avenge the death of her sister and rid the world of Aaron Kina led her to going rogue and joining the Black Tusk. But why did she choose to take this path and betray the SHD and her fellow agents? Fei Lao is a second generation Chinese American. When she was only 17 years old, she tragically lost both of her parents in a car accident, resulting in her being tasked with raising her younger sister, Heather, on her own. Records state that this changed her. Certain behavioral traits, including integrity, accountability, empathy, resilience, vision, and influence, were enhanced, resulting in strong leadership traits that would assist her in the years to come. However, this also came at the expense of her ability to gain and manage personal relationships. While attending City College, Faye joined the school's Reserve Officers Training Corps. She used this to help further progress her career. After a number of positions within military intelligence, Faye was eventually admitted into the National Security Agency, where she worked as a part of the support staff for the Director of National Intelligence. After the Presidential Directive 51 was signed, Fei relocated to the newly formed Strategic Homeland Division as a senior field officer. She would be reporting directly to the Northeastern Section Division Commander, Louis Chang. Shortly after the first wave of Division agents disappeared, President Waller activated a second wave of agents into New York City and ordered Commander Chang to personally lead the operations. Fei was activated to serve as Chang's second-in-command. But, as the helicopter was approaching its destination to pick up Fei and the remaining agents of the second wave, it was shot down and destroyed, killing Commander Chang and seriously wounding Fei. Her injuries meant that she had to be removed from field work. But, as Fei Lao was now the most senior agent in the city, she continued to serve as the acting division commander. From here, she was the primary contact and strategic support for all remaining second wave division agents in New York. Months pass. The division have made vast steps in regaining control of New York. All major hostile faction leaders have been killed, and a number of parts of the city were starting to rebuild. Furthermore, intel suggests that the first wave rogue agents have left the city, along with their leader, Aaron Keener. More months pass. The division's network was taken down and protocol dictated that all available agents must get to Washington DC as soon as possible. But Faye made the choice to stay in New York to stop them from losing the foothold they have gained over the months prior. There is an attack on the southern Manhattan JTF outpost at City Hall. Agents from DC are sent to investigate. They learn that the attack was orchestrated by the rogue agent, Aaron Keener. It has now been over eight months since the majority of the division agents headed to DC, and Faye had finally recovered from her injuries. However, something else was coming, and this would see Faye's whole world come crashing down. A settlement in Hell's Kitchen District has been attacked by Rikers. With near to no defensive systems, and a dwindling amount of JTF to properly guard and patrol the facilities, there were massive casualties, including Faye's sister. Nevertheless, with help from the division agents from DC, she continues the hunt for Aaron Keener. It was around this time that Faye manages to capture a rogue agent who just happens to be working for the Black Tusk, Agent Alicia Coswold, otherwise known as Cersei. The following weeks would see the division locating and eliminating Keener's rogue agents, and eventually the man himself. But even more shocking was the revelation from New York's number one agent. Schaefer, do you read? Listening. Fall back. Keener's dead. But he's activated the network. What's the damage? Purnell's watch is collating the data. Looks like it's all of them. Shit. More rogue agents. Just what we fucking need. No. It's perfect. This will bring the division to its knees. 
And that's when we'll end them. Once and for all. Although still apprehensive of her decision to join up with the Black Tusk, Faye meets up with Barden Schaefer to discuss plans going forward. How's it feel? Comfortable. Lacks personality, though. Easier to spot a friendly in the field. The uniform doesn't guarantee you're a friendly. Fair enough. I like your style, Lau. No bullshit. I think you'll fit in well here. Me too. Do I get to build my team? Or are you testing me out with an established squad? Are you worried about getting hazed? I've had to break into boys' clubs before. I know how you like to test people. Finish this off, and we'll talk about building your own squad. Copy that. Over time, Schaefer was eventually hunted down by her former colleagues and captured. Faye took little time in organizing a meeting with President Ellis. This is our chance to shape history. I couldn't agree more, Mr. President. You said it yourself. Somebody has to step up. I'm willing to take on that challenge. If we're going to get this country back on track, we have to be willing to do things that won't be popular. I know that you and Schaefer had a rather contentious relationship. I hope our collaboration will be more efficient. I look forward to meeting you in person. That can be arranged. Excellent. See you soon, Mr. President. <sighs> what an asshole. After finding out Alice's whereabouts and schedule, Faye caught up with him at Camp White Oak. And when the time came, without hesitation, she gunned him down where he stood. Meeting adjourned, Mr. President. It's done. At this point in time, division agents were already hot on her trail but she had already rang through, announcing that it was the division that had taken the president out. So time was of the essence. They needed to catch up with her before they too were announced as rogue. Chasing her through the compound, they eventually caught up with her in the area that Alice himself had once escaped their grasp. But this time they were prepared. Disabling the helicopter, Faye was forced to engage the agents head on. After a short fight, the division was able to eliminate her supporting BTSU forces. Although Faye certainly brought the fight, the SHD agents had no problem bringing the full force of their vengeance to the party. Let's face it, I haven't heard from a single person that wouldn't agree that this was a disappointing end to the manhunt. But based on the trailer and the sudden announcement from Massive that this was to be the last update to The Division 2, I think that this isn't the last we're going to hear of Fei Lao. I legitimately believe that we were supposed to capture Faye, similar to what we did with Schaefer. But due to the apparent unexpected decision to extend the division over the next year or two, they potentially cut the final cinematic to be expanded on later. This could also be further supported by the fact that Isaac never said anything of substance when she was dropped. But if Theo taught us anything, Isaac can be easily manipulated, so who knows. However for now, let's look at the facts that have been presented to us in game. Faye lost her sister due to inadequate JTF resource to look after the settlements. Faye captures and interrogates Cersei. Aaron Keener is killed, followed shortly after with Faye being found out as rogue. Barden Schaefer is captured by the Division. Faye locates President Ellis and executes him, blaming it on the Division. Faye is found and potentially captured by the Division. Then there is the last comms that we received from this manhunt that leads to the idea that Faye is working as an undercover rogue agent. I know. You hate me. You never trusted me. You probably never liked me and only moderately tolerated me. It's okay. That's okay. We didn't have to be friends. And I know you probably think I'm a bitch, though you would never actually say that. Not to my face, at least. I think the reason we never really got along is we're too similar. We're stubborn, we care too much, and frankly, we're both pretty guarded people. We've both lost people, and we didn't deal with that as well as we could have, I guess, but I hope that when I'm done, you'll understand why I did what I had to do. 
don't expect you to agree with it, but I hope you understand. I'm not sorry it went down like this, but I'm sorry I couldn't tell you why. Hey, Roy. This is hard for me. This is probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do. You trusted me, and I loved you for that. It broke my heart having to keep secrets like this from you, but I knew, I knew if I told you what I was planning, you would try to stop me. And if you tried to stop me, there was no way I could have gone through with any of it. There's no way I could have interrogated Alicia, or met Schaefer, or gone with him. But I had to do this, Roy. I had to. We were losing. We lost the authority. We lost the trust of the people we were trying to protect. Without trust, we have nothing. It doesn't matter how many good or bad things we do if no one trusts you to get the job done. And with Schaefer and Ellis, we lost the legitimacy. We lost the ability to say we are on mission. Hell, the only one who agreed we were still on mission was Isaac. I knew what I had to do. All I needed was access, and I couldn't get that unless I joined them, or at least unless I could make them believe I joined them. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you why. I'm sorry I had to break your trust like that. But I hope, I, I pray, you'll forgive me someday. If you don't, I might have to come haunt your ass until you do. Wow out. Though, if this is true, and she is simply going through all of this to take down the Black Tusk asset, President Ellis, why did she blame his death on the Division? This leads me into two different trains of thought. Ellis is the one responsible for having the JTF abandon the quarantine zone not long after the initial outbreak. This in turn led to many Division agents going rogue, with one notable agent in particular, Aaron Keener. Faye blames Keener for his part in the death of her sister and Ellis's part in putting Keener in that position. The Division is the last organisation with any ties to the old government, giving them claim to determine what's right and wrong. It's no secret that Faye isn't a fan of the way that Isaac operates, but considering everything that's happened, perhaps Faye has finally lost hope in the government and the SHD too. She has come to the conclusion that the Strategic Homeland Division is a failed initiative, and that with all the freedom they are given, they still don't have enough wriggle room under the guidance of Isaac to do what is needed. I don't necessarily think she believes that the Black Tusk are the answer, but now that Schaefer has been captured, she decided to seize the opportunity and kill two birds with one stone. She would execute Alice and bring down the SHD. As witnessed in Wall of New York at the Haven Settlement, trust in the Division is already pretty low. The general public is sick of watching these agents do what they want and eventually turning rogue and working against them. With Faye blaming the death on the Division, that should be enough to push the remaining settlements over the edge, and without the support of the people, the agency would collapse. This would basically put the Division agents in a position of becoming rogue agents. Whether Isaac has flagged them as rogue or not is redundant. In the eyes of the people, they are no longer allies put in place to save what remains. However, I don't think having each of the agents hunted down and killed is what Faye actually wants. This is likely just a side effect of what she has done. She may have just deemed this as acceptable collateral damage in her mission of putting the final nail in the coffin for the old US government and the SHD. In fact, maybe she was hoping that they would regroup with her later on, no longer under the SHD control. Alternatively, the second and probably my preferred direction Faye hasn't lost hope in the government, and she still strongly believes in the Division's mission of saving what remains. But over time, watching this determined and well-funded new enemy, and the remaining agents around her either being killed or turning rogue joining the Black Tusk ranks, she has come to the conclusion that they are fighting a losing battle. The only one left in the government is corrupt, and has joined the other side. The chain of command is already broken. It was up to her to take him down before he was used to bring the general populace over to their side. Faye would go undercover and eliminate Alice after gaining their trust. She had to do this alone. Firstly, she didn't know who she could trust anymore, and those she could, like Benitez, wouldn't allow her to do this on her own. 
but she had already lost enough loved ones and didn't want to be responsible for more of their deaths on her hands. The reason she blamed Alice's death on the division agents was to keep her cover from being blown. After all, Schaefer had already been captured, but Natalia Sokolova was still out there, and while she was still around, the Black Tusk are a threat to the country. Yes, this means that the division has now been burned, but as she had seen them as only losing ground to this invading force, it was a sacrifice she had to make. On top of this, given that they are now rogue agents, she may be able to bring more of them undercover into the BTSU to help in her mission, especially once Benitez and Rhodes receive her message. Feilau decided that it was up to her to do what no division agent was able to, and that the only way to do this was to go rogue, join up the Black Tusk, and take Ellis and the rest of its leadership down from the inside. Long story short, whatever her reasons for doing what she did, I'm feeling pretty confident that she isn't dead. I'm not completely convinced of what and why things played out this way, though I think this is pretty close. There is just a few details that are missing that I'm guessing we won't hear about until we get some new content, whenever that is. What about you? Do you have any theories about what Fei Lao was doing? Otherwise, fingers crossed, we'll start to get some proper content to play down the line. Even some news on what's happening would be nice. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!